first century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come, come on everyone Let's celebrate, we are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one And we can make a difference, yeah we can be the change it takes To make the world a lot more fun Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is our 21st Century Superhuman show, and today I'm with Peter Moon, who is an amazing person, author, um, traveler, someone who deals with time travel, tunnels into the earth, and a lot of pretty mysterious subjects. So Peter, talking with you is always like kind of unfolding the mysteries. So how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Nice to be with you again, Carrie. I know that you've done some traveling this year. You've been near the caves and the tunnels to inner earth in Romania, the Chaklovina Cave. Um, you're updating the Montauk Project for the Silver Anniversary Edition, which is a book on time travel. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Why would we want to know about each of those things? I think they're part of the most exciting things that you're doing. And then Radu Sinemar's new book, Inside the Earth. I've been reading parts of that. That's amazing. Um, but give us a little glimpse into why we would want to know about your adventures that you write about and share about. It's a really good question because I, I wonder that sometimes myself. <laughs> I wonder often uh, because I've been doing this 25 years, mm -hmm. 26 years, you know, and over 26 years, so I, I put together a 25th silver anniversary edition of the Montauk Project, updating the Montauk Project. Now, the Montauk Project was a story about, you know, this super master conspiracy to control the mind, which led to controlling time. Wow. And I'm and getting I, chills as you say that. And the Montauk Project, the pieces of that take place in New York, correct? Long Island? 1970s, uh, climaxing in 1983 on August 12th, according to the stories. So all of these stories uh, are a synthesis of Preston Nichols' experiences. And you know, some of the historical stuff is what he's, he learned. Either and who was Preston Nichols? Who is Preston, Preston Nichols? Nichols was, is the, my co-author, who is the primary author of the Montauk Project. It's based on his experiences and his research but it also took me to uh, listen to him, descramble what he said and write it down in a cohesive fashion. Mm. And it was, it was a, a very under, my contribution, uh, especially in the beginning was very underestimated. Um, wow. And, much, and, you're, and you publish your books through Skybooks, right? Is that correct? My company. Is that? Skybooksusa.com. 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 But, yes. so I went on to investigate uh, the Montauk Project experienced, uh, the second book was Montauk Revisited Adventures in Synchronicity, which led me to the discovery, which is now in the third book, Pyramids of Montauk, of pyram ancient pyramids. In the experiences I had investigating the Montauk Project, I put them into a book, Montauk Revisited Adventures in Synchronicity, which also included some of the adventures that Preston had. And at the end of that book, I all of these synchronicities led me to something which I put into a third book, The Pyramids. I discovered there were ancient pyramids at Montauk. So I wrote a third book called The Pyramids of Montauk. And I connected with the, the shaman of the Montauk pharaohs, as they were known. The pharaohs uh, that derived from Egypt, according to her. And so you had all these like unusual connections, putting that book together. That led eventually, years down the road, to meeting the Montauk medicine book, medicine man, and the Montauk Book of the Living, which goes into some very esoteric subjects. But all of it is um, having, so basically I'm putting a synthesis of these experiences and to demonstrate that 
the basic thesis of the Montauk project is true because you have, we have active live conspiracy at, the, at Montauk, which we find going on, uh, documented. We find corrupt politicians involved with the scenario that actually go to jail. We find uh, ultimately that there is evidence of mind control frequencies being operated at the base. We have actual videos of this. I, I described the circumstances, the companies that were out there operating and challenging us uh, for investigating them while this is all a state park. So that is what's in the book. I, and I take it, so it's going to take, you know, when people used to originally read this book, they go, well, I don't know, I don't know. Now they have to read it and say, well, yeah, that, that, that. The only thing we could not prove, I could not prove, was the time travel. Because how do you prove that? It's a, a little challenging. Well, then into my life walks Dr. David Anderson. So I also put that in the book. I put that in the book. I put the application for the time reactor patent, the patent for the time reactor, which is essentially a time machine. Right. And, and Dr. David Anderson is who? Dr. David Anderson is a, a man who had a laboratory on Long Island during the 1990s and early 2000s. And he befriended me because he read the Montauk Project book, said it woke him up spiritually. He's evolved time travel uh, to very sophisticated levels at this point. When I met him, he could just slow things down and speed things up in a small self-contained field the size of a soccer ball. Now he can, uh, according to his own testimony, can send people back in and out of time. But he's very reclusive and the whole psychology of time travel is a big stumbling block for human beings. It's right. a fantastic stumbling block. And this is why um, I, you know, you can question what good is it for people to learn any of this. Um, I question it myself. I just happen to be in the position where I've been put on uh, the cutting edge of, of certain knowledge. And it's my job self-assigned job to disseminate it. So it's, uh, yes. Yeah, so anyway, I have the, and I have some rudimentary explanations of the technology in there. Um, it's a little easier to watch the visuals on my website, timetraveleducationcenter.com on this subject. But basically what I've done is I've sort of completed the case on Montauk. We've shown that, hey, all of this stuff is going on. It, this is the documentation of what went on. And now we have time travel, which shows that everything they did is completely plausible. And they didn't necessarily, wow. they didn't necessarily use the same technology that Dr. David Anderson is, is using. But it, it's sort of like, what's the difference if, uh, if you get to, uh, you know, you're driving from New York to Los Angeles and you're taking a, an old beat up jalopy or maybe just a Volkswagen compared to a Lamborghini or something. Right. So, there, it's, it's that you get there. And you can see a lot of the similar phenomena in the early work is better understood when you look at the more later technology. So anyway, included in the book, uh, more briefly than extensively, is, is the fact that David took me to Romania. He, he paid for me to go to Romania and, and meet scientists, esoteric people from Romania, and I eventually published a book of four Romanian books by the author Radu Cinemar, and uh, spelled Cinemar, C-I-N-A-M-A-R. And his books talk about fantastic stuff going on in Romania, um, which we've talked about in other broadcasts that you've done with me. Right. So was there a link between um, Montauk and Romania? Well, people will make links. Or, I mean, uh, what was the link for David Anderson, I should say? Because he, once you worked on Montauk, then he wanted to bring you to Romania for a very specific reason, right? Well, right after he had been to, see, Romania is a very special place. And more specifically, this camp called Atlanticron is a very special place. Now, that, that was my gateway to Romania. There's no bones about it. Atlanticron, which is a camp for artists, writers, and scientists where they gather and 
the main impetus of, of the camp is to teach young people in different disciplines, ranging from sports and martial arts to s complexity studies, science, uh, ranging from all across art, um, dance, music. We have a music program, and it's it's informal, but it's it can be very life changing for people. So uh, this year. We had, well, we, for many times the last several years, we've had the two uh, engineers that are the, the main engineers on the Mars rover, Curiosity. And they uh, Skype in to the event and they answer questions. Wow. And they talk to, you know, the people there. Right. And, last couple of times I've, I've been there, I've, I've asked questions myself, and now I'm inviting them to come next year. Interesting. Actually participate in the camp. And that is uh, because we have, and of course, they've talked with uh, Romania's only cosmonaut that went into space, mm. Dimitri. Uh, I don't remember how to say his last name, but I know him well. And uh, so there, there's a lot of high-level people that you know, participate, particularly from Romania. Um, and it's primarily Romanians. So it would be very interesting to, to connect with uh, that other part of the world for them and to, because this camp has had, it has tremendous uh, energy that runs through it. So you can say that Atlanticron is what brought David Anderson. They brought David Anderson into their lives by their energy. And, interesting. and, and now, David Anderson brought me there. Mm. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. First thing he did when he got back was to find me, meet with me, and tell me how bad he wanted to get me to Romania. Well, to, to, you know, he is kind of the link between uh, Montauk and Romania for me because he right. sent me to Romania where I kind of uh, become very acquainted and, and become, you know, Romanianized. Uh, right. to a certain extent. And it's, uh, and I, I don't go there because I love the country. You know, it's, I don't have that. I go there because my work is there. Right. You know, it's, it's like, um, it's not like I've fallen in love with Romania. Um, I certainly have a deep appreciation because it's, it's sort of like the soul of the planet, but I, it's, it's my work. Um, so anyway, uh, to get back to Montauk, you were saying that yeah, Preston Nichols, uh, my co-author, uh, is having severe health issues, as is Duncan Cameron, the uh, person who was cited as the main psychic of the Montauk Project. In the case right. of Duncan Cameron, he has fourth stage, uh, which means terminal prostate cancer. Uh, he has a GoFundMe site uh, for people to help him. Uh, the prognosis for him, I have not seen him in a year uh, where, you know, I don't know that he had that condition then, but he, he, it's advanced according to the reports on the internet and he's not in good shape. Um, I have no uh, data to be optimistic other than, than hope. In the case of Preston Nichols, he had a heart attack in July. He uh, came home. Uh, for a while and then early September he had a stroke So he's on a pacemaker. He had a stroke. He went He went he was starting to recover then he went into a coma his friends played some of his music that he he has a, a Sound system that's very sophisticated and they played him music from that sound system or generated by that sound system and he woke up started to uh, talk again, but I haven't had a report on him in about a week. So mm. um, I, I don't know. I will, if he's still uh, alive, and I certainly hope he is for a long time, I will see him at the end of next month. I was supposed to see him next weekend, but that's not going to work out. So I don't have any reports on him. I will keep people updated if they subscribe. Just sign up for the Time Travel Education Center. I send out emails uh, when I find 
stuff out about. Great. And I'll put those links under the video so that people can access you and this information. Um, and it just seems like your books are such a repository for so much really important information. Um, and then we go from one of the things Dr. David Anderson says about this um, Chuklovina cave in Romania is also that that's one of the strongest places showing the resonance of time travel on the planet. Is that I'll correct? explain Chuklovina cave and I have two videos on, on it, on the blog uh, at Time Travel Education Center. And, and is it the books with Radu Cinnabar that kind of go more into the stories about the cave and other no, associates? No, 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 not specifically okay. that cave. You okay. see, this area that where the Chaklovina Cave is, is in the general area known as the Valley of the Golden Thrones. And the Valley of the Golden Thrones is highlighted in Book Four, Secret Parchment, or it's, it's not called the Valley of the Golden Thrones. That's what it's called colloquially by the people of the, of the area. And the, the, uh, this professor who's an archeologist, and this is a true story or told as a true story, um, one of the workers helping him on the dig uh, finds a, an underground passage and they go down the passage and it becomes more and more gold, pure gold eventually with golden tunnels. Now, it's a fact, it's a geological undisputed fact that there's tremendous gold deposits down there the biggest deposits in the world, I'm told. And it's like the mother load in California. And can we just mention, I mean, probably one of the reasons that there is this high frequency energy in Romania is because of that, you know, the gold under the earth. But this is, you know, we're so used to thinking of gold, mining it, taking it for whatever purposes, but really it's part of what helps build, um, the mechanisms within the earth that allow us to transport through time and space and experience maybe the, higher the, states of consciousness. Gold is, is the greatest conductor of electricity. Uh, you know, we use copper in houses, but silver is better, faster, better conductor, and gold is better than silver. So yes, it has an effect on the brain being around gold. Um, monoatomic gold can have a substantial effect on increasing the fluidity of thought and the rapidity of, of thought. So basically, uh, they discover in the bottom of these tunnels these golden thrones, a room of golden thrones that are the size of giants with uh, accompanied by hieroglyphs on the walls and strange writing and, an and a portal there. But that's, wow. that's just now. This is in the general area. Now, when he writes these books, he basically says that the entrance to that area was deliberately cemented up, and the people that got involved went crazy and died. And then the, they could never refine the entrance to it again. Now that's as of, he doesn't mention it. That might be mentioned in a future book that hasn't been written, but the entrance was lost. Now, where it was, exactly is now this is in the general vicinity of what david anderson dr david anderson completely independent of these books uh by his research said that there was evidence of a discharge from a time reactor or time machine because uh, when you have a time reactor it has the potential to create manifest huge amounts of energy which is explained in my time travel theory explained video series also harvesting, I think it's called harvesting energy from space time. Dave, Dr. David Anderson harvesting will find you videos on YouTube which explain how energy can be harvested. But basically the biggest evidence of uh, a discharge from a, it is, is all of these, the way it's, the sediment has been highly heated. And he says, there's no way that could happen without a time reactor discharge. And so he said that there are other places in the planet that show evidence of this, but none is as spectacular wow. as Chaklavina Cave. Now, he was very surprised when he, he informed me about this, because I said, what can you tell me about Romania? And that's what mm -hmm. he told me, that I had been there the previous year when he told me about this, and I was brought there by an archeologist with some of my friends, he just brought us there. I didn't ask to go there. Mm -hmm. He said, see this cave. 
he does not know the significance of this cave. Um, I will share this with him. I mean, I've shared it with him to some extent. He doesn't speak English that well. But so, so this is a, a remarkable coincidence. See, here's where the synchronicity follows me when I investigate. And we went there again. We went there. Well, go ahead. What were you going to ask? I was just going to ask, who were you saying uh, doesn't understand English very well and wasn't? The archaeologist. The archaeologist. That's what I thought. Hey. Because what you're talking about here and what you go into in your writing is how there are there is accessibility to kind of multi-dimensional sort of spaces, spaces where we have to expand our state of being to enter, which is why, you know, people died when they went into some of those caves, because there was some kind of expanded state of energetics that in order to even enter into that, we have to go through shifts, if that's even possible in these bodies. Well, what, what, where you see it manifest on the trip, the recent trip I took, was dissension among the people in, 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 on mm. the group. They begin to uh, act discordant with one another. Wow. And this is, uh, this is the worst I've ever seen. I mean, there, there have been small squabbles uh, in the past, very small squabbles between individuals or between the group leader and somebody else. And uh, which I found myself in the middle of them because I was close to both and you try to sort it out, but you can't. And when you have that awareness, can you kind of put that out and can people shift by just being aware that they're maybe being affected by the, you know, the energies of the, of the area? I don't know. It's, you know, it, it might require greater indoctrination to appreciate what's happening, but I, I met up with it immediately in, in terms of honoring certain traditions and one of the traditions is you give a if a beggar approaches you and this is i learned this this is how i've been able to do all this stuff is a beggar comes up to you in romania and he's a disguise he's in disguise he's not really a beggar he asks you for for something and you give him something and he's testing the generosity of your heart and first thing i was approached in romania was a beggar and I didn't give him anything, but I learned the tradition because I didn't know who he was, what he was. I didn't have the right money. And I learned this tradition and then the gate opens for you. Mm. So what happened is this, 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 this gypsy comes up and saying, seven lay, seven lay. And I said, oh no, I don't want any. I thought she was selling flowers because she was near a flower. Said, no, 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 for me. I said, oh no, I gave her the money. And somebody comes up to me and says, no, 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 you don't do this. And I said, no, you don't understand. So every beggar that's kind of come up to you, they say, is you're going to give him money. And this happened twice. And, you know, and it was right at the beginning of our journey, this one, and then right at the beginning of another journey. What it is, is this is a right brain process, meaning intuitive. And this is a, a long tradition that comes out of the ground in Romania, you know, and it's been circulated through mythology and folk tales. Mm. And, and when you honor that tradition, now these are the, the Solomonari, they're called. They are the, the initiators in the inner earth. Wow. And they come up and disguise themselves as mm. shepherds or as beggars. And they, they, will, they will take you to a cave for initiation. You may not go inside. You may go inside, but they will take you there for initiation. This is what this archaeologist did. He was acting as a Solomonari, even though he's not officially a Solomonari. He's an archaeologist. The people have this in their blood. So mm. I honored this. And then, uh, and then an, another one where I did, it was only two. He said, everybody's going to come up to you. They're going to all kind of come up to you and you're going to give it to everyone. Nobody came up to me. There were two. You know, it might have cost me $4. You know what I'm saying? But I was paving the path for our group. Wow. And, and, and see, it's a right brain process. And I say, well, of course, so everybody that comes up to you, is gonna, you're going to give them money. I said, you don't understand. You're engaging in a right brain process. It's a tradition. It's based upon the right side of the brain. You, whether, of course I know that this person might just be a, a beggar. But by honoring the tradition and not judging, you know, you engage the intuitive, the creative, synchronistic process you engage it 
So you have nothing to lose except the $4, you know, and yeah. that's, that's insignificant. So, and you engage it because you're not trying to do a, a left brain logical process. Yes. It's not, it's not just that. I know that's, when I travel, I always carry some, you know, some spare change, different kinds of things in my pocket because when there's somebody and they quietly beg, you know, it's not like they're, uh, and I, I haven't gone necessarily to Romania, but there is an energetic there, you know, when you participate in that giving and that receiving. Um, yes, very important. And when you, when you dealing with esoteric phenomena, you have to pay the gatekeeper or. Interesting. So if you don't understand, there are guardians in place. If you don't respect, understand them, you will, you will be shortchanged on the journey or not have the journey. And uh, so it's very important. And, and, and so anyway, getting to the cave, uh, we, we did not only got to the cave, uh, this is the third time we went to the cave, but there was a lot of stuff that happened. I should go back. First time I just went to the cave. When I found out the significance from David, I went back to the cave. We explored further. We found another entrance because the, the cave is huge entrance, but it's all filled with water. So you can't go in unless you have cave gear, you know, or wetsuits and, and, and cave spelunking. Wow. Gear. Right. So you can only go into the mouth and that's about it. And then we, the second time I went back, which I think was two years later, I went back and, and I found a, which was really a mining entrance to the cave. But there's a metal door, which is about the size of a, you know, big TV screen. Uh, you can get through it, but you kind of have to, you know, angle yourself through it. But, it, but it's, it's closed. So I say, okay, okay. So this year when we went back, um, before we got there, the cave was already opening its secrets because the way you deal with these caves, this is the ancient tradition of, the patron god of Romania, which is named Zalmoxis. And Zalmoxis is the prototype upon which many other religions are based upon, uh, ranging from Zoroastrianism to Judaism and Christianity. And he was a man who was transformed into a god after being initiated in the, the inner earth or underground by the Solomonari, these spirits that transform, and they transform, helped him, helped him transform from a man to a god. And so th this is a, a very ancient god, a very ancient tradition. He's also known as a hidden god. But so, so anyway, the Solomonari will bring you to a cave. You can be walking out and they'll, they'll take you to a cave. The, the shepherds there will take you to a cave. Hey, look at the cave. And you go outside the cave and you meditate. You may be asked to come in the cave. Entrance to the cave is more mental than it is physical, okay? I had two friends that had some time displacement when they were, we couldn't get into that cave, but they went up into the mountains and got separated mm. from me and another friend of mine, and they came back with their GPS coordinate was all different because wow. it was being from the States. Interesting. And GPS changed and, and they, you know, something changed. So that was um, a the second year. The third year, or the third time, wasn't three years in a row, two years apart each time. This time, before I even got to the cave, when I got to Atlanticron, a friend of mine there had explored the cave. He got beyond the metal door. He took about 25 people with him, and most of them were women. He says one of his friends got disoriented. He disappeared. They couldn't find him for hours, and then he came back with strange stories, and they went three kilometers into the cave. He said, it's very dangerous. And they found huge bones. He said they were the size of where well, they would be femurs for giants, a femur bone for a giant. There were also bare bones. And he did not take any of the bones with him for later analysis because he said it's disturbing a cemetery. I'm not going Right. I know so, Michael Tellinger has been finding that kind of thing in South Africa as well. So it's, it's starting to appear various places around the world well the anyway um this was so the cave he was telling us these stories of the cave so but by the time we got to the cave uh it, the metal door was locked 
So, you know, but before we got to the cave, so the cave was opening its secrets, but on the way to the cave, we took a fork in the road where we met this man who has a camp nearby and he greeted us with, uh, it's a scouting camp, but he greeted us with uh, hospitality. He fed us, gave us, you know, stuff to drink. And he, he basically, we have a base of operation to go there if we want to go back and explore the cave. He's a cave explorer. Nice. So he knew nothing of the specific legends or the time phenomena. He was talking about the Philadelphia experiment and that was sort of how we connected on a deeper level because he'd, he'd heard of this, he mentioned this. And, uh, and then after I left, two weeks later, a friend of mine went to the cave to explore the cave and he knew this guy. And the guy said, you should have been here two weeks ago. There was an American author who came. Oh, and he figured out who I was and he wrote to me and he sent me the pictures because he, was, he uses that as a base to explore. He's also a movie maker mm. in Romania. It's like a lot of coincidence was, was accompanying this trip. Right. Uh, and so this is, this is the most forward advance I've made into, now it's like I'm, I'm going to become friends with this area of the cave, maybe the nearby town. You know, it gets more and more obscure. But because it's, you know, the road to get there uh, was perilous the last time I went. Not this time, but it's, it's a rocky road. It's not easy. Uh, and, and so anyway, that's, that's, that's as much as I've explored the cave. And um, it's pretty exciting. I, I know, Peter, pretty much everything you write about, it's, you're full of all these amazing stories about esoteric mysteries. I mean, things that we are in the middle of learning about and being able to kind of grow the next step in our consciousness and our awareness. And yours, what you tell about are actual things that are happening and it makes it even that much more exciting. You know, it's beyond theory. It's, you know, it's, it, it's sort of like Indiana Jones in action. Well, what um, I would also say, Carrie, is that you see Montauk was a source of great dynamic mystery. Mm -hmm. Now because of David Anderson, I am going to another source of dynamic mystery. Very it cool. It doesn't have the same stigma that Montauk does. Right. It's got its own stigma and it's its own, it's it's much more closely aligned with nature, nature and it's a key focus of, of Dr. David Anderson. So, um, and the one thing I will also say is the new book that Radu Cinema has, has, is, has come out with and I'm editing it right now is Inside the Earth the second tunnel, which he is talking about consciousness. Consciousness is the key thing. To penetrate these realms, it's more important that you align your consciousness than it is that you geographically go to these areas. You know, the geography is Oh, not, that's a nice piece. Um, I like that. But in other words, but, but so geography does play a role, but it's not ultimately- So we could perhaps in our meditations or our reflections, transport ourselves to Romania and see if we can explore um, a little you bit without you physical. have to do it you don't have to go to Romania you just go to where you are you know you yeah. go into the next world and in uh, my book the white bat I go into I give room exercises for what's called the dark room the dark room is going into the you know the darkness of your own self and it's a very uh, informing learning and growing experience everybody should spend time in darkness every day. Nice. It's very, very important. Well, Peter, thank you so much for visiting with us. Um, I want to encourage people to check out your books, check out your, um, your learning center. I'll put those links under the video. We'll, I'll also put the links of the other talks you and I have done. Um, we've had some good conversations over the last couple of years. And um, Really, 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 the, the work that you're doing, it's done so well, and your, um, your writing, your stories are interesting, entertaining, inspiring, opening up um, to new ideas and possibilities and um, things that we may not be aware actually exist in our world. i um, like to encourage people to check out your work. Really great. And, and as you said, um, if people join your mailing list for your um, time travel learning center you send out great updates uh, with tidbits on what's going on that you're connected with 
Okay, great. Thanks so much, Carrie. All right. Thank you so much. And I want to remind everybody to breathe, smile, and love by changing ourselves and accessing our higher states of consciousness. We change the world. All right. We shall see you all soon. Adios.
Now, now, now is the 